Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Windows Virtual Desktop Masterclass. Uh, today, me and Tom Hickling will, uh, will present a session on image management and MSX app attach. For those who don't know me, my name is Stefan. I'm a PM on the Windows Virtual Desktop team. And again, the agenda for today is a conversation on image management, followed by a conversation on MSX app attach and how that solves the application management challenges in WBD. With that said, let's do a little bit of homework and define what we mean when we say image management. There are technically two definitions, and people tend to use the one that they fits best their uh, way of thinking about the process. So we have building the image, and then we have delivering the image and managing it, meaning updating it, keeping track of the changes as we are using our Windows Virtual Desktop environment. In this particular conversation, in this session, we're going to focus on the first one, which is how do we prepare the image management? And I have used this graphic on the right-hand side to represent the multiple options for doing image management in WVD. A lot of those options, they actually come from the way we used to do things on-prem for our physical devices. And we then took those and kind of started using them in Windows Virtual Desktop as we were maturing. And as we go into the next slide, we will see that um, we're going to summarize uh, what are our options. And as I mentioned, a lot of those things that we're going to take from on-prem and we're going to use in WVD, we're going to reference to those as the legacy options. Uh, they're not necessarily legacy in the sense of you should not be using them. If that is something that your organization is very well versed into, uh, keep using them. But to summarize them, we have SSCM. That feature is still there. You can prepare your master image with SSCM. Then there are a combination menu steps and scripts, or you probably fully automated the process where you've built some form of offline image preparation. And when I say offline, which is the difference with the one that where you actually have to interact, the difference there is that you don't have to spin up a Hyper-V, boot up Windows, do all your customizations. That will be the online preparation of the image. And the offline will be the one where you're taking a VHD, that's already been through the out-of-box experience, and now you're just doing the configurations without having to boot the VM. Both options are equally good. It really depends, again, on what your organization is used to doing and what you feel more comfortable. And of course, we have a plethora of third-party tools that allow us to build those images. I often get the question, can we use them? Yes, you can use whatever you're using today. There are two disclaimers. You got to make sure that you end up with having a VHD and you got to make sure that it's uploaded to Azure, right? We can deploy your VMs from the master image that's on-prem. You have to put it in the right region. And this is where usually it comes challenging if you're doing it manually and not taking advantage of the newer technology. And that's why I call it the wrong way. That if you're not using the new technology, you end up having a lot of overhead, like moving the image around regions. And how do you maintain that image? And what I consider the right way, and it's more of a best practice, is actually leveraging either Azure Image Builder, which right now is in a preview, so not a lot of organizations are willing to use that in production. But as that feature is moving towards GA and as it's maturing, that is definitely the recommended path for preparing your images. And then what it allows you as well, which ties into the next bullet point, which is the DevOps bullet point, it does allow you to also automate and treat your image preparation as yet another code. What does that mean? Well, instead of you having to worry about did they change the script, did they not change the script, it's all in a repository. It could be DevOps, it could be a third, uh, Azure DevOps, it could be a third-party repository, and you're managing it as a code. And from there, you're delivering into your environment by using the best practices of DevOps and preferably Azure Image Builder. So this is the summary. I call it the wrong way. Don't take it uh, literally. It's the way if you're comfortable, keep doing it. And if not, and if you want to really try to take this to the next level and take full advantage of Windows Virtual Desktop and Azure, then you should be working on Azure Image Builder and DevOps. With that said, we're going to move into the second part of this presentation in which Tom is going to be talking about MSX App Attach, my favorite technology. Thank you, Stefan. OK, so <clears throat> moving on to the MSX App Attach uh, conversation. So we're starting with this um, picture of some pancakes just to really emphasize the, this concept of layering and being able to separate the various layers 
that constitute a virtual desktop inside of WVD. So just to take a step backwards, if you're looking at a physical workstation or for some virtual deployments, the user profile and applications are intrinsically linked to the operating system of that VM, i.e. your user profile only exists on this particular machine, as do the applications. Moving to another machine doesn't necessarily mean that your user profile will follow you. So what we at Microsoft are trying to do is to break down that monolith. Now, we have achieved half of this by using FS Logix to manage the user profile. So what we can do with FS Logix, which is intrinsically linked inside of WVD and a service lots of customers are using, is to separate the user profile from any virtual machine. So we store the user profile on some storage and then dynamically bring that into any VM that the user is logging into and hence their profile is there and their experience can continue on a VM that they might have never logged into before. So that gets us half of the way there. But what about the applications? Now, this is particularly problematic in a, uh, a pooled environment where users have a different set of applications and they might be logging into a brand new VM every single day. So that's really where MSIX AppAttach comes in. And it enables us, as this slide is showing, to move from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is really demonstrating a traditional deployment using sort of personal desktops. Um, and we typically tend to see this in our conversations with lots of customers out there. So an organization might have any number of images or uh, groups of users. So that might be a business unit, it might be geography, it might be project-based, whatever it might be, there are images for these sets of users. So in this instance, in my slide, we're talking about business units here. Now, obviously there's a user profile and then there's some common apps and then there are those departmental apps. The problem is that if there's a requirement to update the sales image, for example, that image needs to be updated and rolled out to the virtual machines. And then it diversifies from those other images. If there's a requirement to update just one of those common apps, then that application needs to be rolled out across all virtual machines, all images that that is present in. And then if there's a departmental app like the HR app there, if that needs to be updated, that's another update to that HR image. The point here is that's a lot of admin and a lot of overhead. What we want to do is to be able to move over to the right-hand side, which is effectively br bringing this dynamic delivery of applications. So we start off with one single golden image. We manage the user profile using FS Logix, and then all applications, be it the common apps, be it the departmental apps, are dynamically delivered or presented to the virtual machines that the user has access to and then can consume any of those apps on any of those virtual machines. So how does all of this work? Well, this is just a little slide around the sort of mechanics behind the scene in WVD for AppAttach. So the first action is that an IT admin will add some applications, some MSIX applications to a particular host pool. And they would do that through the Azure portal. WVD will then instruct a random host within that host pool to reach out to the share that is hosting the VHD or the VHDX or the SIMFS for that MSIX package, and then interrogate that, and then check the format of the application, the certificate is correct, and if there's any dependencies. Once that's done, then all of the session hosts within that host pool will, within five minutes, reach back into the WVD control plane to check to see if there's any applications that then need to be mounted on those session hosts ready for users to consume. At that point, all of those session hosts will mount the VHD that contains this application, otherwise known as staging. That then makes those VHDs present on that virtual machine. And then the user will sign into WVD and WVD will understand the applications that this particular user has been assigned and the application is registered with the OS and then the user can launch that application as if it was installed locally. Now, this is currently in preview. So just to demonstrate what it looks like inside of the Azure portal, here you will see a host pool and there is a new section called MSIX packages. Now, what's shown here is I've got two applications already presented, but if I wanted to add a third one, 
All I need to do is click on the add button and then provide the SMB storage location that is hosting that VHD, fill out some information, and then I've added that application to the host pool. The second step would be then to present that to users through an application group. So let's have a look a little bit behind the scenes at how this works. Now, the point to stress here is this is absolutely not the user experience. This is behind the scenes, and in fact, this predates the current preview where it's integrated with inside of the Azure portal. But what we're doing here is to demonstrate to IT admins how this all operates. So I'm just going to play this little video, but I want to just demonstrate that um, obviously we've got ad remove programs there. Power BI is not present. And in the middle is Disk Manager, and on the right-hand side is just PowerShell to run the attach scripts. So I'm just going to run this video. You'll see Power BI is not installed on this virtual machine. It has no uh, understanding of Power BI. So I come to PowerShell and run the attach script. What you'll see is that VHD is mounted on this VM. I come and search for Power BI, and hey, presto, there's Power BI. Now, the application is registered with the operating system. It now launches to the user. They have no understanding that this application is not installed locally onto the C drive of this virtual machine. Power BI will now launch, and Power BI behaves exactly as you would expect Power BI to behave. So if I go and get data, et cetera, it, it's Power BI effectively running on this virtual machine. So I come back to uh, PowerShell, and I now run a detached script. What you'll notice is that VHD disappears. And if I come and search for Power BI, it is no longer present on this VM. So no remnant whatsoever of Power BI having ever been present on this virtual machine. So that's really sort of the mechanics behind the scenes of how this all operates. So let's move into a little bit more detail about some of the requirements and some sort of common errors that we have seen customers have during the preview. So the first is just some requirements around storage. Now, the first requirement is that MSIX applications themselves must be stored on an SMB network share. Now, if you've done FS logics in the past, the requirements are essentially exactly the same. So they need to be uh, on some SMB storage. Our recommendation would be either Azure files or Azure NetApp files. Those are both PaaS-based services. So let Microsoft manage the underlying infrastructure. Or you could run some IaaS-based VM storage service, but that requires more management from your side. And all of these storage options need to be domain joined to the domain that your session hosts are also joined to. Now, the VMs require read access to that share. So the way to do that is to create a group inside of Active Directory, your local Active Directory, and then sync that with Azure AD. Once that group is synced with Azure AD, then you need to provide that group, the storage file data SMB share reader role on that storage account. That is effectively the same thing as share level permissions using some uh, perhaps some older terminology. And then finally, you also need to add the active directory group into the NTFS permissions. So this is effectively the same thing as file level permissions. And in fact, it is exactly the same thing. And then the performance requirements. So this is just around one single VHD that contains one single MSIX image, which itself has one MSIX app within it. And so this performance requirements are at steady state IOPS, we only require one IOP. And for machine boot and sign in, it's 10 IOPS. And there is a maximum latency of 400 milliseconds. Let's just move into some best practices, and we'll start with that 400 millisecond requirement. There is a timeout for mounting these VHDs. So if that latency is over 400 milliseconds, then that mounting will fail. So our recommendation is to place the storage that's hosting the VHDs in the same region as the host pool. We would also recommend excluding the MSX images, so the VHD, VHDXs, or SIMFS files from any FS logic profile containers and any antivirus solution that you may have. We don't want those to be scanned. We also recommend that you don't locate the MSX package on the same storage as the FS logics. Now, that might be fine for dev and test, but for a production workload, we would recommend you separate those two. And if you have any disaster recovery processes in place for your session hosts, and that typically means that customers might have some cold or, in fact, some warm VMs in another Azure region to fail over to. 
our recommendation would be to consider exactly the same, but now to include the MSFX file share in that disaster recovery process, such that your applications can be consumed in the event of a disaster, in the event of perhaps having failed over to a different region. Uh, in addition, application dependencies. Now, those should be placed inside of the base image. Now, they can be put inside of the package, but it's not really recommended as there's no guarantee that that dependency will be delivered to the session host before the actual application is. And then finally, the session host minimum versions. So the remote desktop agent itself, so the WPD infrastructure agent, the minimum requirement is 1.0.2569. Now, in actual fact, the WVD control plane will manage the versions and it actually will update the, the agent to a modern version. But if you were having some problems, it's good to just double check the version of the agent. And we also require Windows 10 Enterprise 2004 above, where all of the MSIX capability has been built into the operating system. And what about the actual conversion best practices? What things should you not try to package? Well, the first is any hardware or printer drivers, any .NET components, VPN clients, or antivirus products. None of those tend to package particularly well, and uh, your success rate may decrease. We also recommend having a look at the package support framework. And now, what we've typically seen is a conversion rate of around about 40% natively. Adding in the package support framework increased that roughly to around 60%. And the PSF is actually just an open source kit that helps you to apply fixes to your existing applications when you might not necessarily have access to the original source code so that it can then be run inside of an MSIX container. Can we get asked a lot is can applications be auto updated with MSIX app attach? The answer to that is no. So if the application does have an auto update option, it should be disabled during the conversion process. So then updates to applications need to be managed separately. So IT will need to roll out a separate version of the application, but sticking with the same family name. And can you run multiple versions of the same application? Well, yes, you can. You just need to be able to change the package family name inside of the MSS conversion tool. So let's just conclude with some common errors that we've seen during the public preview of AppAttach. So the first is your subscription needs to be whitelisted. If that hasn't happened, there's no chance of AppAttach ever working. So there is a form that needs to be completed. You just need to basically submit your subscription ID. It will get whitelisted, and then that capability will be active on your Azure subscription. Once your subscription is whitelisted, then you need to make sure that you are using the preview URL, which is you see listed here. This is a URL with the feature flag enabled, then to go and enable the MSIX capability inside of the Azure portal. There are a number of errors around the file share. So in particular, we mentioned it earlier, but latency. So make sure that the region is the same as the session hosts. If you are moving it to a different region, then you run the chance of hitting that latency requirement. We also need permissions set correctly. So both the RBAC as well as NTFS permissions for those computer objects. And we do not support Azure Active Directory domain services. So this is our PaaS-based directory services capability. And the reason that we don't support that is the direction of replication. So with AAD DDS, the replication is from Azure AD down to Azure Active Directory domain services. But in reality, what we need is those computer objects to be present in Azure AD. And there's no way of doing that with Azure AD directed domain services. And what about MSX package related issues? Mostly relate to certificates. So if the application contains an untrusted certificate, that's not going to work. The certificate has to be a code signing certificate. And the certificate needs to be installed on all session hosts that are in the host pool where this is presented. And the certificate needs to be installed into the computer trusted people location. And then application related issues themselves. So basically those come down to application compatibility issues, i.e. any application that is not supported on Windows 10, or for that matter, any application that's not supported within the MSIX packaging format itself. 
So there's no way around that at this point, unfortunately. So if you have any of those issues, just go back through and double check your deployment and your configuration, and hopefully you'll be able to get that up and working. So just some next steps. Obviously, if you're new to WVD, there's a link directly to the WVD documentation. If you're looking particularly at MSIX Appatash, we do have a tech community article to start you on the road to getting your applications packaged and then presented through WVD. So I'd just like to say thank you for your time in watching this. Hopefully it's uh, been of interest to you. Uh, and with that, I'll hand back over to Stefan for your goodbyes. Well, thanks, Tom. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time and uh, going through the content that we wanted to present to you. Have a great day.